All right. In my last video, I showed how I used the Lowrider version 3, mostly printed CNC, a do-it-yourself CNC, to cut some 3 millimeter thick cold rolled steel to make a wrench for the new cobalt trim router that I've installed on my Lowrider 3 CNC that carries a router. I have two Lowrider 3s, one with a router, one with a plasma torch. This video shows you a how-to for the prep for that job in Fusion 360. Ready, set, make. The Cobalt router comes with a 17 millimeter wrench. I need a 12 millimeter. I snapped a photo, did a tracing of the bitmap, and then used Corel Draw to tweak the vectors to get the shape. Okay, so it's been quite a while since I did any plasma cutting, and every time I go back into it, I have to kind of re-educate myself on how to do the cam portion of it in Fusion 360. But let's tackle dropping in this wrench file that I drew. And something we've noticed is that uh, scalable vector graphics files, Fusion 360 seems to somehow either ignore the dimensions within the file or gets it wrong. So I outputted it as a DXF instead of a scalable vector graphics file. We'll go, we'll put it on the floor. We'll grab the DXF file from my computer. Brief bit of music while Fusion 360 number crunches. And the file that I designed is for making two wrenches, but due to the tight quarters and not having enough room to clamp my grounding clip on, I'm only going to make one of the two wrenches right now. But I'll drop the file in with two of them, but when I go to extrude, I'll only extrude one of them. So um, this is the one that we're going to make. So let's tap on the, the E hotkey for extrude will go up three millimeters because that's how thick the metal is and so now we have a, a body that is based on this DXF file so now all we have to do is change from design mode to the manufacturing tab for the computer aided manufacturing or CAM and once there, we'll take these steps in order. First, we'll do a setup, then we'll do a profile for cutting, and then we'll do the preview, the simulate the preview, and finally we'll create the uh, G-code file with the post-processing steps. So again, it's just taking them in order, and that kind of helps me to remember uh, when I get back into it. So we'll start with a setup. We'll create a new setup which by the way is the same thing that happens if you tap this button here create a new setup and the first thing we'll do is put this origin over on the corner by tapping on this spot here and I have my machine programmed into my library my my uh, lowrider version 3 CNC for plasma cutting has a high eyed name brand cut 60 DN on it so when I select this, there's the Heinade, Heinade Cut 60 DN. I tap on that to select it. Our cutting operation is uh, specified here. And then we have, uh, we've already selected the stock point, which was when we tapped over here. And we're going to select the body that we created. You can see it already has... Oh, it's calling it unsaved. Let me save my work here before I move on. And we'll call this um, wrench. We'll call it 12 millimeter wrench for cobalt router. It comes with a 17 millimeter wrench. 
but it's made for you to hold the button in and do a one wrench method. And I like to do the two wrench method. So we're going to name it that. And now when we go back into those steps again, we're going to go set up. We're going to set that stock point over here. And the machine has been selected. We're doing a cutting operation. We've selected our stock point. And the body is going to be this 12 millimeter wrench for cobalt router. And now we've gone down the first tab from top down to the bottom. Now we'll just click on the next tab and we'll keep doing that from tab to tab. Now I happen to know that this piece of metal that I'm setting this up on is I'm using almost the entire piece of metal and I have it I have the drawing happening 1.25 millimeters in from the edge that's a very tight margin which is one reason why I'm only doing one wrench instead of two because the margin is so tight I don't have any spare room to clip my grounding uh, clamp on so 1.25 millimeters for stock offset that's pretty much all we need to bother with on this one and post-processing uh, we'll call it 12 millimeter wrench for cobalt and I'm just going to copy that and paste it in for program comment and we're done with the setup I can click OK now that the setup is done the next thing to do is to tap on this button which is the same as tapping on this button and choosing 2D profile I'm going to choose my tool, which I need to go to my local library, and I'm wanting my plasma. And the, the tool is a PTM80, that's the pencil torch. That is a pencil torch that the Hynaid people recommended. I, I can't remember if it was actually a Hynaid torch or just a compatible torch. But anyway, I bought it off Amazon. I asked them which pencil torch to get for the cut 60 D dn and they told me to get a ptm 80 so i've got uh, an imperial listing of it and a millimeter inch listing of it um, I, I started off with a one millimeter kerf width but that was a little teensy bit too wide and so my parts were not coming out dimensional so i changed to a 0 0.85 millimeter kerf width and I've got that change made on the millimeter version listing, but I don't yet have that reduction in the inch listing. I need to remember to do that later. Uh, and for thin metals like 18 gauge and 20 gauge, I've been cutting at 3,000 millimeters per minute. But for this 3 millimeter thick, almost 10 gauge, it's just 0.2 of a millimeter shy of being 10 gauge uh, thick metal. I'm going to slow it down to 2,000 millimeters per minute. Um, you know, that might be, I don't know. Let's try, let's try 2,500 for now. I might come back later and take it down from, from 2,500 down to 2,000. But let's try the 2,500 for now. So we'll select that, save it. And again, we're coming down, we're coming down each one of our items tab by tab. We've selected our tool. We're doing a through cut. There's the speed that it inputted from what I just did in the library. We'll go to the next tab on geometry. And here's where we select the geometry that we're going to cut. We just tap the select button and then tap on the top of this model. That's the geometry we're going to cut. It loads that in as a face contour. We're done there. We don't need any holding tabs. We would, if we needed holding tabs, we'd put them in there. But one small part like this, we can get by without holding tabs. So here we've got standard 10 millimeter retract height, clearance height, and a 5 millimeter retract height. Um, the top height, these are all default settings. They're fine. Tolerance at 0 0.01, that's fine. Uh, sideways compensation, default is fine. Compensation type is in computer. That's fine. These are all default settings and they're fine. I'm going to leave these unchecked. Move on to the next one. 
we don't want to bother with keeping the nozzle down. We're only cutting one part. Um, we do want to lead in, and I'm going to accept these default values for the lead in. And my piercing clearance was taken from my settings in the library uh, for my, my cutter and my tool. Now, this is very crucial right here, selecting the preferred lead-in positions. Uh, because my piece of metal is so small and so tight around the edges of my cut, I can't afford for it to put the lead-in uh, back here because then it would be trying to pierce over mid-air where there's no metal. And I also don't want the lead-in happening in this area here where I'm really crucial on dimensional, dimensional accuracy. So I need a place that's with a little bit of meaty extra metal around it like this area or this area. So I'm going to select a lead in and in case you're curious, you can't just go anywhere on the line to do the lead in. You've got to find a place where there is a node and you get one of these little uh, dots representing a, a node on the curve. So I'm going to tap on that and say that that is where I want the lead in to happen. And I'm now to the last item on the last tab. I can click OK. And here you can see it has uh, shown me a simulation of how that cut is going to look. And now I can actually watch, uh, I can tap on simulate with machine and hit the play button. And you're going to see my pencil torch drop down, cut that lead in, head around, and come back and cut the lead out. Let's watch it. Just like that, wow, that part is cut out just that fast. We can now exit the simulation, and we're ready to do the post-processing. So it's got my machine selected. It's got my chosen post-processor selected, which is the Plasma C um, that I, I downloaded, and it works great. Um, every now and then, if I'm doing something really complicated, I have to finagle one way or another on this merge circles thing. But on a simple cut, one part cut like this, I'm just going to leave it just as it is. It took my name and file name and comment. And so we're ready to save it. And then all I have to do is take the outputted um, NGC file and send it over. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll attach it to an email to myself. And then when I head out to the garage, I've got a laptop in the garage. It's an old used uh Windows laptop that I have reformatted to install Linux CNC on the laptop and I'll open up a browser on that laptop download this file that I emailed to myself and then I'll run the cut job so um, last thing when I hit this um, when I hit this um, um, uh, post button it's going to generate the post process file and then it's going to open, it's going to sock that file onto my hard drive and then it's going to automatically open the G code file up in my preferred uh, G code editor, which I've told it to use Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code, VS Code as my G code editor. So watch, as soon as I click post, it's going to pop this new file up in Visual Studio Code. Boom, there it is. Now just one thing to mention and um, that is that right now this one line right here uh, M190P1 that P1, the one there designates that in my list of materials like 18 gauge, uh, 20 gauge is a material 20 gauge is the first material in the list um, I think in this particular instance, I think your default material doesn't count. It's looking at your first actual customized material that you've loaded. And for me, the first one is 20 gauge. The second one is 18 gauge. They're getting thicker as they go. And the third one is the third material I have listed is 10 gauge. So if I run this file just as it is, it's going to automatically select 20 gauge thin material with the faster cut speed and the lower cut amps specified and um, and I don't want that so I'm going to change that one to a three 
and uh, I'm going to hit save. And that means that when it comes into Linux CNC, the, uh, the Plasma C interface is going to know that it needs to select the third material in my list of materials, which for me is 10 gauge, and then we'll be good to go. All right, I think that's about it for this, and let's head over to the plasma cutter and do some cutting. Okay, so I back down from 50 and it's down to 45. I set my pierce delay to zero, and I changed the feed rate, the cut feed rate from 2000 to 2500. Let's save that. Go back to main. Let's do a test cycle. Okay. All right, I'm going to enable the torch. Put my mask on and try again. If you'd like to build a lowrider version 3 CNC of your own, the link for all the details on that is in the description. I recommend the new Cobalt trim router, but there are other routers that will work fine as well. I recommend it simply because it comes with a lot of options that make it particularly well suited for hobbyist CNC makers. And if you'd like to make a lowrider version 3 CNC that has a plasma strapped to it, Check out the full set of details in the description. This has been Doug with Design 8 Studio. If you enjoy our content, please click like and consider subscribing. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.